I tried an experiment, which I think it has a certain amount of potential to it. I want a hunch that came up with it. Because I was thinking about the various approaches that there are, and there are at least half a dozen different approaches to how to navigate your hands between two sets of strings here. And one thing that came to me pretty soon in this whole process is I realized, I mean, you've got one set of strings is the C natural scale. It's seven notes in a row. And then there's the five sharps and flats. So one set of strings only has five strings, five notes per octave. And as you know, it's the same as on the keyboard, where between the E and the F and the B and the C, there's, there's no black note, because those are only a half step. The way the scale goes is it's a whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. C to D, E to D to E, those are whole steps. E to F is a half step, and B to C is a half step. That's why there's no black note between them. And on this instrument, those two intervals, E and F, E to F and B to C, because there's no black note, gives you the opportunity to reach your finger through more easily. You got, uh, there's a string missing, space of a string. So you can easily reach your finger through and pluck the E and the, the E or the F, the B or the C from the other side. And that was an approach I was uh, trying to work out. As uh, probably it's called the reach throw, and if it's not, then that's what I call it. Now I started thinking about this. Here's the thing. Because in the natural scale, there are five whole steps and two half steps out of the seven notes, seven different notes, seven different intervals, five of those intervals are whole steps, two of them are half steps. Additionally, we a half step, we rarely play two notes that are half step apart together because that's considered dissonant. However, there's a fair amount of time that we will play a whole two notes that are a whole step apart. That's not so bad. That doesn't grate on our ears, and we use it in a number of chords. Uh, a six chord, a chord that might have like C, E, G, and A. You hear that a lot in the Beatles. Things like that. So, <laughs> I started theorizing. I started thinking about it. Now, work out the mathematics. Since there's two half steps in the scale and there's five whole steps, the ratio between two and five is two and a half. You know, two times two is four, plus an extra, which is a half of two. So it's two and a half times, or we could say it's 250%. Per there's 250% as many whole steps in a natural scale as, as half steps. It's two and a half. For each half step, there's two and a half whole steps, which means just do it mathematically, just random mathematics in any, pretty much any tune that's in, that's in a single key, a single scale. Any interval is <laughs> between consecutive notes is two and a half times as likely to be a major, a whole step as it is to be a half step. Start thinking, aha, uh -huh. and plus on top of that, we don't play half steps together. Usually, we usually either play them as a sequence, going half step up or half step down, but we don't usually pluck two strings for a half part, a half step apart because that rarely and usually, if on the rare occasions, it's done for dissonant effects. So I was thinking about, you know, what were the just mathematically, what are the numbers, what are the odds of how many of how many frequency of what if reaching through these two gaps to play these notes. And, and so this is what, the, what I came up with, is I changed it from the key of C to the key of B flat. And the difference that that made, well, it made a difference. <laughs> I can't thoroughly explain it because I haven't thoroughly figured it out in my own head. But I changed it to the key of B flat. So now the key of C, which usually you start on the, on the reds, scale. There's a, a C chord, it's a C minor, uh, but the B flat is a major chord. B 
flat, E flat. Yeah. So what I did is I tuned the C to the, the E to E flat, and I tuned the B to B flat. And the key of B flat has two flats, which are B flat and E flat. So now, when you reach for your finger through these gaps, it's it's not a half step between them; it's a whole step. It's E flat to F. It's B flat to C. This might make it a useful tactic. Um, so now uh, you you know you could reach through with one finger, or well, you could reach with two fingers and play them in sequence, play them together. As I said, mathematically, if you have two notes in a row, they're two and a half times as likely to be a whole step as being a half step. So the amount of opportunities that you have to reach through and play. and a half times as much opportunity to be using this tactic. And what I did to, to substitute, I switched. I switched E and E flat. So now the other side that should be E flat is now E natural. And where it should be B flat is now B natural. <laughs> so here's a C. And here's E to B. So now, this is a C minor chord. This is the ordinary finger ring for a C major chord. Now it's a C minor. But if I want to play C major with one hand, now I can reach down, <laughs> this finger reaching down to the other set of strings, which is now E, major, e, e natural. Uh -huh. So C. Let's get the fingers on them. Uh, yes. This way I do a switch also with the fingers. Because, why? Well, because I'm reaching down to a lower string and it's um, less of a contortion to reach for the lower string with your finger that's a, a, a lower down finger, uh, lower down on the, on the uh, or the pecking order of, the, of, of your fingers. Um, so the top is the thumb, that, that's perfectly fine. And the G, these are the same two chords, same two notes you would ordinarily play in a C major chord. And then, instead of playing this, which is now C minor, I switch these two fingers, just as I switch these two notes, and the middle finger goes down to the bottom note, the C, and the lower finger, the fourth finger, reaches down to the E natural. See how, let's see how that goes. Not too bad. And try it again. So it's a matter of we just try it again. It's I mean like when you what you do when you're alone, you practice, you just keep playing these chords over and over. Just uh for hours and hours you keep experimenting and playing with it and the more you do it, the more habitual your fingers will will uh, not find it unnatural to, to, oh yeah, yeah, I'm used to making that configuration. I mean, this isn't any more difficult than configure, configurations a pe uh, guitar player does. The stuff the guitar players do is much more complicated than anything I'm going to end up doing with this. So, uh, just takes practice. So there's E, e minor now. And now I switch the fingers. But, and I'm, I just have to keep this in mind. Yes, I have to switch. I have to reach down for the lower one with the, with the lower down finger. And... <laughs> Whee! Anyhow, this is, uh, this is evolving. It's a, it's, a, it's a concept that's evolving. And... Uh, I think it has potential. Now let's see how we do a chromatic uh, change. Oh, going up to 12 chromatic notes. Let's see how it works. Starting with C. Da, da, da. See, there's a switch. There is definitely a switch around here because ordinarily it would be 
bum, 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 bum. But now it's bum, 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 bum. And I think this, there might be a, that might be useful as well. Um, trying to play a chromatic, a chromatic uh, sequence where you, go, you end up pretty much going bum, 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 except where the reach throughs, you go one after the other. But now, you go bum, 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 and then it's over, and then you go back to what was E flat is now E natural, so then you go up to this. It gives a lot of potential for different fingerings. Anyhow, that's enough of that. Uh, that's enough of that, la di da. Uh, it may work out, and if it doesn't work out, it, it would have been, it will have been an, uh, an interesting little experiment, which in any case will help me, you know, even if I say, ah, that's, that was a failed idea, and I'll go back to it, then I've got more practice of, of reconfiguring how you're thinking about notes, but I think it has potential to tune in the key of B flat, and then tune the E flat and the B flat to E natural and B natural. B natural. Oh, <laughs> oh yes, it was the um, the ruddles, the ruddles to the song. Let, oh, let's be natural. Let's be natural. Let's be natural. And then, of course, um, on the Simpsons, they had a band called the B-Sharp, or your barbershop quartet called the B-Sharps. <laughs>